that we were on one aside. So, good morning, and it's good to be in the house of worship today. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to go through just a few announcements before we get started with worship and giving praise to the Lord. Uh, there's going to be no men's Monday morning Bible study because of Memorial Day. I had to practice that a lot this morning, okay? So they were, they were taking the day off tomorrow to uh, celebrate Memorial Day. Um, if you order uh, Bats Games tickets, they are available in the lobby. Please see Kelly Churchill for those. We have about one more week to sign up for the Holiday World Trip with the church. And there is a church council meeting in the Fellowship Hall this Tuesday at 6.30, and you're invited to come to that. There's other things in the bulletin that you guys can look through this afternoon. Right now, we're just going to give our hearts and our minds to the Lord. Amen? Will you stand and worship with us? Worthy of every 
pray. Gracious and loving God, Lord, we come before you this day by sharing our gifts with you. Lord, we thank you for the ability uh, to share this morning, Lord. You ask that we give with joyful hearts. So today, Lord, may these gifts bring us joy. Uh, may they bring us a hope. And may we remember that you call us to do your kingdom work. Glorify, be glorified in us giving. And may it be used for your kingdom work. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say. Amen. Amen, church. Everybody have a seat. It's good to be together this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to be headed to a time of prayer. Are you ready to pray this morning? Have you let all the distractions of the day just kind of start to fade away and spend this hour just in the presence of the Lord? It's hard sometimes because, you know, Cracker Barrel opens in just a few minutes. So, I mean, it's, it's hard. But I'm just going to ask that you guys would just really focus in on prayer time today. It's the best communication that we have with the Lord is to be in his word and to pray to him and talk to him and to listen. So listen back today as we lift our prayers and our praises to him. And I have a few that I want to go over with you this morning. First off, there's some prayer quilts on the altar rails this morning. Um, there are three people who uh, are part of our congregation in some way. Uh, they are, one of them is for Donnie Spalding, who is battling um, cancer, and he's going through his chemo and his radiation treatments. Um, he also lost his sister just recently, Karen, so we want to lift him up in prayer, and we want to cover him in prayer, and that's why we have placed these quilts on the altar rails this morning. Alan Smith, who has had surgery, or is getting ready to have surgery, hopefully this week, um, he had a little postponement this week with some infection that he had, and they're taking care of that. Karen, would you like to add anything to that? Good. Appetite is back and the infection seems to get better. So we want to get Alan through this surgery and praying through the healing process of many weeks after the surgery. So we have a, a prayer quilt up here for him as well. We want to cover him in prayer. And we have a young lady who also has the deep loss of a family member in the church. And that blanket or that quilt is over here too. And we want to lift her up in prayer as she um, goes through a deep grieving process. And um, just continue to pray for her as she journeys through that. Some information that you guys might want to know about is Michael May uh, has been put back in the hospital. He was home for a few days, and I'm sure he was very happy. But he got pneumonia, so they put him back in the hospital, and Pastor Joe has spent some time with him. And uh, he is doing a lot better, so we're hoping that he will get to come home and stay for a lot longer than what he was home for this time. Um, so keep praying for that hope and that healing in Michael's lungs. And keep praying for those deep breaths that he wanted us to continually pray for. Albert Priscillus is also in the hospital right now, but um, Pastor Joe spent some time with him as well this week. And Albert is doing much better as well. He seems to be headed home soon. Um, Larry Johnson lifted up Tressie this morning. I uh, just continue prayers for her and her journey. Um, they are also going to celebrate, you all ready for this, 60, 60 years of marriage on Friday. So can we give God a clap of praise for that? Debbie and Bobby Barr celebrated 40 years of marriage just yesterday. Is that right, Debbie? Y'all can clap for that, too. I know it's hard. <laughs> and then uh, Debbie also celebrated that her granddaughter, Sydney, uh, had graduated from high school. I got a text just a few minutes ago asking prayer for David Wells. Um, he is the father of Jim Hill, who sings on the worship team as well. He is battling pro um, colon cancer, actually, and has been for quite a long time. And he is headed to Houston to MD Anderson, um, seeking other forms of cancer treatment. So he's on a big journey for a few weeks out in Houston, Texas. And as you all been watching the news, there were some storms out there last night. So um, will you keep him in your prayers and just they can find the proper treatment for the cancer that he's dealing with in his body as well. Now, do you all have anything that you'd like to lift praises up to God about and share with the church? Or do you have any concerns that you'd like to have uh, shared? Carol? Um, I was not here last week. I was in Grandview with my son and daughter-in-law and my grandson. He graduated eighth grade graduation. And he's now a freshman, which breaks my heart. <laughs> Shouldn't be that old yet. <laughs> what a wonderful praise. Our kids are moving up. I mean, yeah, there's been all kinds of great graduations going on. And we had a wonderful preschool graduation. If you have never attended that, I know that as a 
maybe you don't have a kid or something who comes to those aren't preschool here, but I'm telling you, we had over 300 people in the gym Thursday night. Um, it was a beautiful sight. We watched it from the upper rail and went in the south and stuff like that, and it was just amazing to see the, just the camaraderie between all the people who came in the celebration. And Noah's Ark and their staff did an amazing job. So we can celebrate that and give God praise for that. They sent 37 uh, pre-K kids off to kindergarten. So we can give God praise for that because that's wonderful. Yeah, Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. You need a look at them and have that going on, but that's wonderful. An eighth grader became a high schooler, and a high schooler became a college and headed into college. That's wonderful. Um, the kids are moving on. Anybody else? Well, I know uh, if Maverick was here, <laughs> he, he would celebrate um, and tell us that he does a rodeo in Washington County. And he does mutton busting, which is riding a sheep until the buzzer goes off. <laughs> and last year, he'd come right out of the gate and fall off. So this year, uh, that's where they are today. They're back at the rodeo today. So this year, yesterday and today, he made full rides on that mutton. And um, he also did really well in his roping. So we were really proud of him, even though it seemed like a trivial thing. It was important to him. I heard he earned ten dollars for the mom. Yeah, that's too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, if y'all want to see that video in the church, see Bobby Bart because it's hilarious. It really is. It's great things. David. Uh, I got to steal thunder from Pastor Joe today. All right, a big shout out to everyone that came out last Sunday night. Had a fun time. Hope everyone enjoyed it. So. Yeah, if you. Uh, we're here for the Pentecostal family picnic that we had for the church on Sunday. David did an amazing job with the fireworks. You know, I thought, okay, we'll have some sparklers and we'll have some like fountains and stuff like that. No, I felt like I was at Disney. I mean, it was awesome. It stopped people on Gordon Ramsey Road. We prayed that they wouldn't have a wreck, but people just kind of pulled off the road and watched everything. And he and Troy Reynolds just put together a great show, and it was amazing. It was a great time to be with the church on Pentecost celebrating the power of the Holy Spirit. They did a great job. Alright, let's take a few minutes of silent prayer. I'm going to ask also if Joel, I think she's going to play for us a little bit. Um, if you feel led to come and pray over one of these prayer quilts, we would love the family and the body of Christ to join together and pray over these people who are in the middle of a storm. And they'll come out of that storm. We know they will, but the journey is sometimes hard. So if you feel led to come pray over these prayer quilts, we invite you to come forward during this time. We'll take just a few minutes of silence and then we'll pray together as Jesus talks to pray.
Father, the words of that song. Your word is a light unto our path. And we praise you, God, for your word. And we stand on the promises of your word, Lord. As every person came forward, Lord, and, and prayed for these prayer quotes this morning, I just kept going like the Holy Spirit and said, pray for the fear. So we come against the fear, Father, of the journey of the unknown. For those who might be afraid of what's next or just basically what they don't know, Father, we ask for your presence to be an overwhelming presence in their life, God. That they would feel, they would feel you every step of the journey. And we give you praise, Father God, as we watch our kids grow older and move on to different classes, they move on to different situations, different schools, and, and different things. We know that you are in control, God, and you have ordained every step of their way. We ask that they would keep their eyes fixed upon you, for if they don't, they will sink. We ask that we come together as the body of Christ and we pray for them, Father God, every name that was written down this morning, that their eyes stay fixed upon you through the storm, coming out of the storm, and yes, Father, even going into the storm. And Lord, we come against the weather today in the name of Jesus. We come together, Father, asking that the storms dissipate wherever they're at right now. You, you tell us to be alert all the time. The weather people have told us that they are having an alert day. But if we stay ready, we never have to get ready. So today, God, as Jesus lifted his hands to the storm and said, peace be still, we come together as your children and say, peace be still. Stop the storms from any damage, from anything that's going on out west. And we begin to pray for those who had damage last night in Texas, God. We pray for our country, and we remember those, Father, who gave and sacrificed their lives this Memorial Day. May you be honored, Father, and may you be glorified. And we thank you that you have taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This time we'll have the kids come on up. Awesome things to see. 
So I want you to remember that it's Memorial Day, that we think about the people who lost their lives in the wars, but also people who served and, um, you know, they came home and we're glad they did. But we want to them too for Memorial Day. I have a flag for you all. Now, I'm going to ask if, do we have anyone in the congregation who served in the military? If you have, please stand up. Anybody served? Okay. Stand up, Bob. Stand up, Bob. I know you did. Okay. Yes. Today's uh, scripture reading comes from the book of uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 up through 9. Hear these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in supplication, situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present in your request. To God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
we come today and we, we think about the, what God allows us to be part of and, and do. And part of what we get to do is remember as we rejoice. Amen. Rejoicing is about remembering and, and celebrating and being part of what God has called us to and through. Amen. We remember about what God is in the process of doing for us and in us. We remember about what God has done in the past. We remember what God is doing now. And we remember what God is going to do from what we think about. Uh, and someday we'll remember what God is going to do in the future. Amen. Think about those things that we get to remember. Today, uh, Debbie did a really good job of uh, describing what happens on uh, the day. Originally, it was Decoration Day. And it moved to be Memorial Day. And, and it was originally about our, our fallen soldiers. Uh, we think about those that have gone and served our country and fallen and, and then we decorated their graves and then, then it became a little bit more. Now we even do our loved ones as well on Memorial Day. And we think about those that have gone before and we remember. We remember who they were and about them and, and we come into this moment uh, of, uh, of this uh, time together and we think about that. I remember a, a story growing up of a, an uncle that, a great uncle, a little bit my great uncle that I never got to meet. Um, he was uh, in the war, World War II, and he was a paratrooper. And that was the way he was trained to do. On his first jump, uh, it was his last jump. Uh, he, he was coming down, and the Germans were shooting up, and, and uh, that, was, that was the end of his story of, uh, of, of uh, being a soldier for our country. But he made a difference in the midst of that. Uh, and I remember the story as a kid about who he was before and how we remembered him, even though I never met him. Have you ever got to remember someone that you've never met? We get to do that all the time. And, and Paul is, is writing to folks, and he's talking about rejoicing with God always. Again, he says rejoice. How often do we get to rejoice and wonder about uh, in the midst of the moment of where we are? We said, but Paul, don't you understand uh, what it means to, for me in this rejoice? So today's a, a great scripture. It's, it's one of those scriptures where you get a couple bumper stickers from, Christian bumper stickers or memes or posters that you can hang on your wall. There's a lot of good information in today's scripture about things. And Paul's talking about rejoicing always in the Lord. Now, you find like, well, Paul, don't you understand how hard life is? I'm sure the folks at the time were reading that were saying the same thing, but you have to understand where Paul was writing this letter about rejoicing from. He was in chains and prison. In the midst of the moment of being in chains in prison, he was writing about rejoicing in the Lord always. Now, I tell you, I can tell you it's hard to rejoice always. Well, there's some really good times to rejoice. And sometimes we can think about what rejoicing might look like to us. Can you show me what rejoicing might look like? We rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. We rejoiced with the presence of Pentecost. We rejoiced with what God only can do in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. What God does. Last week we had a great, wonderful time and all kinds of people put all kinds of hard work and effort into last weekend uh, to make it happen. We had a picnic, a church picnic. We had some fireworks and, and you heard about people stopping and, and looking. But it was the joy of being together. Rejoicing can look like fireworks. Rejoicing can look like graduates walking across the stage. Rejoicing can look like riding a button, right? Rejoicing can look like all kinds of different things. And we think about those great opportunities we have rejoiced, but rejoicing can also about be living through a hard time with the presence of God. 
See, that's what Paul was really talking about. Rejoicing in all ways and in all times is really about those hard situations, too. I always wanted them to think about the big, grandiose moments like fireworks and graduations and arenas full of people cheering on and Final World Series games and whatever that might look like. You know, the energy that is in the room. Have you been in that energy before? Anybody been to a big event where there's all kinds of energy and you can't help but be caught up or swept up in that energy? God has energy for us all the time, Paul is reminding us. And he says, rejoice in that kind of thing that God has called us to. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the moment of life. Rejoice in what God has called you to. Rejoice always. And then he goes on and says, let your gentleness be evident that the Lord is near, right? Let the gentleness of your life be evident that the Lord is near. Now, how many of you uh, think of gentleness as the main characteristic you look for in an individual around you? Anybody? Like, if you're looking for a powerful leader, what's the first thing you look for? Gentleness! Right? No? It's on there. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Did you know that? That banner hanging on there? What we should be looking are for the fruits of God, right? When we're looking for someone to lead us, we need to be looking for that fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I didn't even need to realize I was back there this morning when I preached in the early service. And I didn't. I was like, I'm the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm like, oh, wait, I can just turn around and look at it in the second service. It's hanging up there on the wall. Gentleness is part of what God has called. And he's saying, let your fruit be known, right? Let the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit, it's not fruits, these aren't like one piece you can pick, like today I'm going to be gentle, tomorrow I'll be loving, to the next day I'll show joy. Uh, you're supposed to be doing kind of all of these things at the same time. Now we're better at some things than others, amen? Have you ever been better at something than something else? Anybody? Uh, we all are gifted differently, and we know that about ourselves. And that's what makes the body of Christ so incredible, that we are gifted differently, but together uh, we make something better. Amen? It's we're better together than we are ever apart. And he's saying, let the gentleness of, of your of, of be evident in all that the Lord is near. So when we're being who God has called us to be, when we're living in the fruit of the Spirit, when we're letting that fruit uh, be exposed to others, when we're showing God's goodness to others, when we're showing the best of the best of who we are, right? Because, I mean, man, that's a great standard, isn't it? Uh, be loving and joyful and uh, living that joy and that peace and that patience and the kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Don't you just love those people? I'm like, oh, I want to be with you. I want to be with y'all, but how often do we not make that standard? Anybody? Falling short of the glory of God in that moment? I know I do. Uh, I do. But I want to try to be like that. I want to try to be like this the scripture text this morning. I want to live into the scripture text. I want to be joyful always. I want to rejoice. We talked about this last year as a theme that we would walk in, 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 with, in with joy, right? With the Lord. We would be walking with joy and and I'll let you know that joy isn't about our emotions, it's not about our hope, it's not about anything that's going on around us, it's about what only God can do. That's where that joy comes from. Do not be anxious about anything, Paul says. That's how he goes on and continues this. He says, don't be anxious about anything. Say what, Paul? Anyone want to say that? Say what, Paul? Don't be anxious about anything. I am not, ooh, that's some hard words, but it's in there. It's in there. Don't be anxious about anything, Paul says, but I'm like, I don't know, Paul. You don't know my life. Anybody been there? The anxiousness of the moment. Being anxious about being anxious. You get there? I'm anxious because I'm anxious. Because what's going on around me, I become more anxious. Uh, because of my anxiety, I get more anxious because I'm anxious. Uh, sometimes it's good to have help, right? You might have a, I mean, uh, the, through my little insurance thing, we have this like self-help thing we can do, and I've, I've got this coach that, that I can call, and they'll help me through some of these things. They'll help me talk about it. And it's okay to talk about these things when we're anxious. It's okay. 
It's okay to share with another. It's okay to do the things you need to do to reduce that anxiety. Prayer is one of the things that Paul goes on to suggest. He says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request before God. How do we come before God? With our petitions, right? We come talking to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I'm struggling with today, but I want to be thankful. Now, where's a good model of those where you can find those kind of prayers and, and that kind of life? You'll find them in lamentations where people are lamenting, but eventually they get to the point where they're thanksgiving in God. Or you can find them in the psalmist, too. They'll be writing about something, and it sound like they're having the worst day ever, and then all of a sudden they turn around and give God praise. Those kinds of prayers are helpful in our life. But, and, and Paul is saying, you know, um, be in, a, in this time of prayer. We're, we're, we're called to be people of prayer. But sometimes when I pray, I don't know about you. Do you ever think about how you're praying? Like, this is the way I pray, and then I'm talking to God, and I'm, then I reflect on my prayer later and say, well, is that really, uh, you know, um, this way or that way? And, and then, 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 you know, um, I can be anxious Sometimes when my prayers aren't answered the way I want them to be answered. Anybody ever get there? Be anxious about my prayers about being anxious. Like, it's God, you're not moving fast enough. You know, Lord, reduce my anxiety. And do it now. Right? Slow down what's going on in my life. Make it easier for me in this moment. Lord, just do it now. If you do it now, I'll be okay. But sometimes it takes a while. Not everything is on our timeline. Amen? Sometimes I have to tell my children that. Not everything is on your timeline. Not everything is on our speed, right? Sometimes I have things to do, right? I'm looking at my daughter. She gave me the eyes. She said, why did you mention me? <laughs> Amen. Easy target. Um, so, uh, but I think about those opportunities and those moments and, and that and, 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 and how it is. Um, and, and, and we think about what God does when we give thanksgiving and, and and then, and then he goes on and says, And the peace of God, which transcends uh, all... Uh, let, me, let me back up for a minute. I want to read something to you. This is awesome. Now, this author is unknown, but it, it, it's a little older uh, thing, but it's just so awesome. I want to share with you. It's caused about... It depends on whose hands it's in. It, <coughs> and basketball in the hands... In my hands, it's worth about 19 bucks, maybe a little less, or a little more. Depends on how much you spend on those balls, right? A basketball in, in, in Michael Jordan's hand is worth about 33 million. It depends on whose hands it's in. A baseball in my hand is worth about six bucks. A baseball in Mark McGuire's hands is worth 19 million. It all depends on whose hands it's in. A tennis racket in my hand is useless. <laughs> a tennis hand in Pete Sanford's hands is a Wimbledon championship. These, uh, some of the athletes are a little older here, right? Um, but we can delve back. It all depends on whose hands it's in. A rod in my hand might keep away a wild animal. A rod in Moses' hands will part the mighty sea. It all depends on whose hands it's in. A slingshot in the hands, in my hands, is a kid toy. A slingshot in the hands of David was a mighty weapon. It all depends on whose hands it's in. Two fish and five loaves in my hands makes a couple fish sandwiches. Two fish and five loaves in God's hands will feed thousands. It all depends on whose hands it's in. Nails in my hands might produce a birdhouse. Nails in the hands of Jesus will produce salvation for the entire world. It all depends on whose hands it's in. As it, now, as you see, it depends on whose hands it's in. So put your concerns, your worries, your fears, your hopes, your dreams your families and your relationship in God's hands because it all depends on whose hands it's in, right? As Christians, that's what we come to do. We come, hopefully, to put it in God's hands. 
Hopefully this morning we've come to place those things in God's hands. We've come to put our anxiety. We've come to put all these different things that are going on around us into the hands of God. That's what Paul was talking about. So he said, oh, Paul, what are you talking about? He's talking about that very thing. It's on the hands that we depend on in our life. Whose hands are we putting ourselves into? Who's, who are we trusting in the midst of these moments of life when we're walking through some of these wonderful, amazing events where we're walking through the challenge, the most major challenge of our life? Who hands are we leaning into in the midst of the moment? And then Paul goes on to say, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, right? How do we get that peace? It transcends all understanding. It's from God. And it guards our hearts and the mind of Jesus Christ. That's when you say, God, I know you got this. Right? God's got this. How many often have you ever said that? God, you got this. Yeah, God, you got this. I know God's got this, so I'm okay. God's got this, God's got this. But sometimes God needs us to step up and help him along the process, right? You can't just say, God, you've got this, and then do nothing, right? Sometimes you've got to do some stuff around the way. So God's got this. Um, but in the midst of that, he, he gives us his moments of hope. And, and here's a... Um, I did it again. Last service I did it, and this service I did it again. There it is. I found it. Here's a study note from my study Bible about uh, this verse 7. It says, God's peace is different from the world's peace. True peace is found in the, is positive thinking. In, uh, true, fe uh, true peace is not found in positive thinking in the absence of conflict or in good feelings. It comes from knowing that God is in control. Our citizenship in Christ's kingdom is sure. Our destiny is set. And we have victory over sin. Let God's presence guard your heart against anxiety. It's in the presence of God that these things happen. It's not... It's not about anything but the presence of God, right? And in the midst of that life, when we lean into what God has for you and for me, there's some amazing things. But sometimes we have to wait. Have you ever had to wait on anything? Anybody had been in the process of waiting for something? Um, you might see something good coming, but you know you're going to have to wait on it. I know the graduates that just went through, uh, I graduated, they, they knew this was their senior year, right? And they had to wait for the end to come, right? Uh, that they'd be graduating. Something was going to change in that moment. Yesterday, we were we were uh, down in Georgetown, and I saw a nice train um, sitting down there, and I knew it was coming this way. And Joel wasn't with me, and we're train trackers now. We're uh, rail fanning, and, 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 and I knew it was coming, so we came home with the groceries we had in the back of the car, or Joel and I had made a trip to Sam's Club, and we were coming back, and and, and I knew we had stuff in the car that needed to get home. And Joel was at home with his brothers and his sister. And, and so I knew that I needed to get him to go up there. And so we went back up to the railroad tracks in Ramsey. And I parked my car and I got out my lawn chairs and I opened up a soda. And we just sat and waited. We just sat and waited for the next thing to come because I knew something was coming. And I knew it was going to be good for what we wanted to do. I saw the engines. I could tell Joel what was about to come. Two dirty engines on the front, a nice shiny one in the middle of AC, whatever. He'll tell you the numbers of the engines. And it's coming in the middle, and it's going to be good. We know it's going to be good. It's going to be something that we want to see. And we got to enjoy time together. But sometimes it's in the waiting that we have. Now, it could have taken all night for that thing to come through. Thankfully, it only took 15 minutes from the time we sat at our lawn chairs. But in that time, someone stopped and had a conversation with me. And I thought, well, maybe next time I should put it out like a little, you need prayer sign out there, stop and talk. Um, but whatever it might be, it was good. It was all good. And I think about that in our waiting. Sometimes it's all good, but we need to be putting ourselves in the hands of our Father, right? And then Paul goes on to say these words. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is good, whatever is right, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think of such things. Now, I call these the whatever statements 
of Paul, right? He's saying that all these things are whatever. Now, what does what ever, whatever mean? According to Webster, whatever, whatever is in anything or in everything, or no matter what. No matter what, he's saying, put your trust, no matter what. If, it, if it's true, put it, your trust in, in, in God. If it's of God, it will be true. If it is noble, it will be of God, right? Whatever it is right, it will be of God. Whatever is pure is of God. Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent or praiseworthy, think of such things. Now, where is he putting your head in this moment? Where is Paul putting our head? And the things of God. Right? He said, be attracted to the stuff of God. Be attracted to the fruit of the Spirit. Be attracted to the things of God. Focus on the things that only God can do in your life. Because there's all kinds of ways to get distracted. Amen? I flip on the TV and I see something that I don't like and my heart begins to hurt, right? I get distracted by the things of the world. I get distracted by the stuff of the world. I do it all the time. I, I can get so obsessed with what's going on around me that isn't of God that I forget of what is God doing around me, right? What has God done in the past? What is God doing right now? What God is going to do in the future? What is God up to? We, we say that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? That's the same God is in the midst of our life, that God is in that moment, that in trusting uh, and, and, and thankful prayer and, and setting our minds on the Christ, that we have a new mindset that comes from this joy, that we might rejoice always in these things. And then he goes on to say, whatever you have learned or received or heard for me or seen, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Whatever you've learned or seen or heard from me, put into practice. What is practice? Anybody? Landon, what's practice? Repetition. 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 Opportunity to get better, right? We have to practice the things we want to do. Right? Anything we want to be better at, we have to practice. Sorry for shouting you out this morning, brother. Uh, uh, put you on the spot, but I, you know, I know I know that you play sports, and I know you do lots of them, and I know you play the drums, and I know you have to practice those things to be better, right? Practice is something we need to do. How many of you were perfect at something the first time you ever did it? Anybody? You got to practice, right? If you want to get better at it, you got to practice. It's not the same thing with faith. When I surrender my life to Jesus, I can't say, oh, I'm good, Jesus. I'm all done. No, I've got to then begin to practice my faith. I've got to practice. And every time I do my faith, I get a little bit better at it. That's what John Wesley talks about moving on to perfection in kind of a weirder way of saying it is we're practicing our faith. Why are we practicing those moments? Now, one of the things I love about medicine is it's a practice, right? They're trying to figure out the best way to serve, but they're just guessing. It's their best guess, right? It's kind of like meteorology today. They're practicing meteorology. Will they be right or will they be wrong? We're in a high alert state today because, huh? The stream? Oh, we've got something going on. But we're in that alert kind of opportunity for that moment. So we think about those moments in, in, in our life, what's going on, and we practice what God has called us to do today. So I want us to practice something uh, today. You see that little guy behind me? What's it say? Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say... Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. One more time. I want to hear it loud this time. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. Rejoice. Okay. You said it loud enough, I'll let you go. <laughs> but sometimes we got to practice our rejoicing, right? we got to repractice what God can do. Let's pray this morning. Grace and love of God, Lord, we thank you for these ways that we come before you this day. Uh, to practice our rejoicing in you. Lord, part of what we come together to do in worship is to rejoice in you, Lord. And as we gather today, may we uh, uh, take that home with us. May we practice this each and every day of our life that we rejoice in you, Lord. That we put our trust and our care into you, Lord. And that we put our focus in you. 
And we give you glory for all that you've done, all that you continue to do, and all that all of you will always do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say. Amen. Our closing song today is My Hope is Built. My Hope is Built. <laughs> and it's in your handles on page 368. Please stand. Let others see his goodness through us. And may we give God all the glory this day and